going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Apex Podcast presented by Rock Shack. I'm sitting here with Russ Finsterwald, uh, legend of Colorado Springs, humble legend of Colorado <laughs> Springs. Um, but yeah, man. Anyways, how you doing, dude? You recovering okay from Leadville this past weekend? Yeah, I mean, definitely like Leadville um, and then doing Steamboat the next day. It makes for a pretty heavy weekend on the legs. Um, but yeah, um, it's been five days, I think, since Steamboat. It took me probably like two days before I felt like I, my muscles weren't sore and stuff anymore. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, just been taking the whole week pretty chill, ripping around on my e-bike. Um, haven't ridden like a normal pedal bike all week. <laughs> um, but <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's been awesome. good to good to chill for a bit before rebuilding for the last few races we have left this season yeah yeah sweet man so so for the people on the podcast that don't know who you are i you know i know, i have a little bit of background but let's let's dive into a bit about who you are you know how you get into cycling and that kind of thing yeah um i grew up here in colorado springs riding a lot of the trails we'll race on this year in the apex um captain jacks is like where i fell in love with mountain biking so it's pretty special to be able to race it during the apex um and yeah, for me, um, the mountain bike's pretty much always just been a tool to like explore and have fun doing something different out in the woods. Um, and that's really how I fell in love with the sport. Um, and eventually, yeah, got into the racing side of things around the age of 13. And um, since then, it's pretty much all I've been doing, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And so has there ever been a race like this? I mean, you've been in the Springs longer than me and the mountain bike side of things for sure. It's like, has there ever been like a mountain bike event or a race like this in the Springs? Yeah, you know, we've had a few pro XCTs come through town um, a while ago. I want to say like around 2010, there was a stage race at Cheyenne Mountain State Park. Um, oh, wow. That was pretty cool. Um, but that was more like UCI focused. So we didn't really do these big marathon type days where you get us get out into the backcountry a little bit like the Apex treats us to. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think while there have been some pretty big mountain bike races in Colorado Springs, there's never been one that um, truly showcases our trails like the apex does and um, gets you out there yeah because we haven't even i don't even think we've announced fully where the courses are because we're still trying to finalize some permitting and things um but i mean even last year like it was pretty much all the all the good stuff like if you had right. a friend who came to town for four days like those are the rides that you would tell them to hit yeah exactly that's where you'd send them i mean jones park is probably one of the coolest downhills around. I mean, you just don't find a long continuous downhill that drops 4,500 feet in um, however many miles it is, but just a long continuous downhill like that is so cool. And even in the races, it's, we don't do that anywhere. I mean, maybe in Breck Epic, you get some long downhills like that, but even, even there, I mean, you'd Breck's already at 10,000 feet. So you'd have to go up super high to be able to get 4,000 feet of vert in one downhill. Um, so yeah, it's pretty special being able to just do a long climb and then you're just treated to this long rip and descent all the way to the finish line. That was always yeah, my favorite Jones, stage. <laughs> Jones park is something special. So that is your favorite stage of the, of the apex over at least over the last year. Well, like, yeah. Cause the, the one that's been the, the, uh, the podcast favorite so far with all the athletes coming on and everything else has been uh, monument. Everybody's right. falling in love with the monument stage. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Jones Park as well. I mean, I don't ride it as fast as you guys do, but I just think it's crazy to me how I can do a five-hour ride and it's just like four hours up and then an hour down. Just yeah, straight, it's, straight it's fun. pretty cool. And and I'd agree with that. Like the Monument stage was definitely a bit of a sleeper for me. Like I haven't ridden a lot of those trails just because it's a little ways out of town, so I don't get up that way too much. But I was yeah. pleasantly surprised by all the um, single track out there. It was a good mix of like ripping fire roads, technical descent, so. It was pretty cool, but I think Jones Park just has a bit of a special place um, in my heart because that's like I've just always dreamed of racing down Captain Jacks and whatnot. So it's yeah, it's just pretty cool in a different way, I guess. <laughs> and so you were racing, you were racing up near the front last year. It was Keegan that was he here last year and did he win or who who won the Apex last year? Yeah, Keegan won last year. Um, I think he won all the stages. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so were you guys like battling pretty close because they're kind of short stages for what they are. And so like, how is the, how is the race playing out up the front? I guess most of the days. Yeah. I think that that's sort of another thing that's cool about the apex is almost every day races differently. Um, I mean, day one's a time trial, so that's, yeah. you just go out and suffer by yourself for a while. Um, but then yeah, monument day two, 
Um, that Mount Hermon climb is um, a pretty long climb that lends itself to group racing a little bit um, until it yeah. really gets steep. Um, that's kind of where things exploded for our group. Um, I want to say Keegan and Riley got away and then me and Lachlan were stuck right behind them, just kind of chasing for a while and they eventually got out of sight. Um, but yeah, day three would have been Jones Park and we're pretty much a big group just because Gold Camp when you have a lot of like 10 strong guys, there's a lot of drafting on it actually. So we were yeah. pretty it's much pretty a, steady. It's like a steady climb. Yeah. There's really like no it's... kickers until you get really close to Jones park. And that's yeah. where the elastic finally snapped in our group. Um, me, Keegan and Riley got away there. Um, mm -hmm. and they gapped me a little bit before going into the single track. Um, I was able to chase Riley down on the downhill, but couldn't quite catch Keegan. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah well does he does he does he come out here and ride often like he's had to have ridden that yeah before. definitely like we've done a lot of mountain bike camps at the otc back in the day yeah um so yeah he's been here a few times ridden the trails a fair bit he, he knows how to surf the scree we have here in colorado springs um yeah yeah but yeah i mean it'd been a few years i think before since he'd ridden jones park so definitely wasn't fresh in his brain like it was for me <laughs> yeah no for sure for sure and so I guess, what are you, what, what are you looking forward to most, I guess, coming up with the apex in this coming year? I mean, we, we hope to see you there. We're going to see you there. Right. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's the plan so, right now to be there. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm looking forward to quite a few things about the apex, honestly. Um, one, I feel like we really haven't done that many true mountain bike races this year. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of races on my mountain bike, but I don't really consider things like um leadville a true mountain bike race um it yeah. is in a way but it's not like you're not ripping much single track out there and um that's what i like about mountain biking the most is when you have technical stuff in it so yeah, yeah i mean apex is a proper mountain bike race um you can't get away with riding a gravel bike there or anything like that so um yeah i'm really looking forward to that just shredding on my mountain bike um yeah and two just kind of being around the low-key environment that is the apex it's just a fun four days of racing um i feel like a lot of the lifetime stuff i've been doing this year I've, um there's been a lot of pressure in a way um yeah and apex it's just gonna show up have fun racing my mountain bike for four days and whatever happens i don't have to worry about a series or trying to get as many points or um just finishing no matter what like if a, just, something catastrophic yeah. happens out there i get to pull out whereas in leadville i had to run down columbine for a while get a new wheel and try to score some points so just oh, like really yeah so just nice to have like a low-key chill sort of weekend of racing bikes and have a good time yeah before we dive into chatting because i want to hear about your leadville experience um has it been has it been kind of weird i was thinking about this because i know we did a podcast you know for my personal podcast and um i was thinking about this last few days like while you were at leadville and steamboat is um uh, has this year been kind of different for you? Like, like more different than it's ever been? Like, I, I mean, you've kind of done the privateer thing and the, the mountain biking thing, but like you just said it a bit ago, it's like, it's going to be nice to just get on the mountain bike again. Like, is this like kind of the first time that you've kind of been dodging some of the mountain bike events to make sure that you're kind of ready for like unbound or, you know, SBT or something like that. So has it been kind of like a weird year, like almost like a change of disciplines? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, completely. I um, agree with that for sure. I feel like um, this is sort of the first year I've really dived into the gravel side of things. Um, yeah. and that's, um, changed my training quite a bit. Um, and yeah, just sort of, like I mentioned earlier, having this big series in the U S is, um, there's a lot of us who are gunning for it. Um, I mean, it's a lot of prize money at the end. Um, so yeah, it's just been a lot of pressure and trying to be as well rested going into these races and trained as best as possible for them. So it's, in a way been more to manage this year, but it's also been a fun new challenge in a way. Um, it's kept me more motivated than ever before. Like sometimes towards the end of the season, I'm like ready to go ride my dirt bike in the mountains and like some yeah, 14ers, you're, but <laughs> you're really good about that, man. That's one thing I've always been really jealous about <laughs> you with is like at one moment I'll see you on the group ride and then I won't see you for four weeks and you'll be like, camping in like the most picturesque gorgeous place and riding your bikes <laughs> and just like hanging out and i yeah, just didn't know how sure. you could switch that switch on and off yeah for um, sure but so. but yeah so like how are you i guess how are you finding that balance and, and it's a lot closer in that leadville series than than i thought 
it was, or at least it was portrayed to me is like, uh -huh. dude, you guys are only set like the top five is only separated like six or seven points. Is, are they yeah. hard points <laughs> to make up or like, um, yeah, I mean, really, I mean, it's just like right now I'm in fourth place, three points out of second. So, yeah. um, really you just need to beat that person by three points in the next two races, which is only one and a half positions per race, really. Um, yeah. so if I beat him, if I beat Cole by two places at the next one, but only beat him by one, you we'd be tied. Gap. Right. So it's like just this super tight racing. Cause it's the points are linear. It's not like if you win, you get, um, exponentially more points than second or something. Yeah. So it's, it just, it's really kept it pretty tight. Um, and yeah, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a pretty fun battle to the end. It, um, and it has me motivated that it's so tight because, uh, anything can really happen in these. Next well, you're only races. like. I think you're only like six or seven points off of Keegan. I think, I mean, yeah. it's not like, it's <laughs> like, it, I thought like with some of these series, like, you know, USA crits and some of these things, they, they blow out where it's like, it's almost pointless. Like it's right. like the person could not show up for the last four races, but that's not the case. And so how many races are left? We got that mountain bike race that you were talking about. Yep. Um, and then big sugar gravel at the end, October in October. Yep. Wow. So that's a long season and are they awarding it there too and everything? Is it just going to be like a big show? Yeah. Like big sugars, um, actually the only race that's mandatory to attend. So, um, you have to be there if you want to be considered in the overall, you have to start that race. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Okay. And, and do they pay, is it, was it 10 deep or what? I think it's 10 deep for the series. Yep. Yeah. And there's 25 guys, 25 women, right? Uh, 30 of each. Yeah. I think there's about 25 left now. Um, but there were 30 at the start. Oh, we're like people, people pulling out and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's been a few different people who've pulled out, um, for different reasons. Um, but yeah, some it's just more than they wanted to do this season. Yeah. Um, they're not like, I think Leah says she doesn't like racing gravel, so she's done. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and then I think there's just a few people who are at this point, they've realized they're far enough behind in the points to be able to even finish in the money. So they don't really see the point in finishing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to finish no matter what. I mean, obviously, since I'm doing well, it's more of a reason to finish. Yeah. But I, I just feel like once you sign up for something, you got to see it through, especially there are so many people who wanted those spots. As I well. think I think that's the biggest thing. That's what right. like I'm, <laughs> I'm immediately thinking right there is like, you know, we talked about this previously, like you were nervous about getting in. I was like, dude, if, if he's nervous about getting in, like, and we were, we were lo talking to like local guys and that I was like, Oh, there's no chance. So, like this guy's <laughs> getting in, like, you know what I mean? Cause you're just like right. doing the math and it's like, yeah, it's it, tight. There's a it, lot of strong people. <laughs> yeah. Cause who we talked about him last time, but who was it that, uh, is it Todd? It wasn't Todd Wells. Um, one of those guys missed. Yeah, he missed out. There was a whole article on it, and they were just, just like, you know, uh, Bush, um, Kabush, yeah. Oh, Jeff yeah, Kabush yeah. and Standish, yeah. both two guys that, um, in my opinion, might should have been considered for it, but. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's interesting how they're doing that. So I'm kind of curious how they're going to do it next year. Like, if they're going to give, like, you know, whoever wins it, obviously automatic, right? You're going to defend it. Right. And then, and then after that, like you go with a whole new 24 just to give it because i'm not saying that some of you guys are a dime a dozen but it like starts to become like there's like several dudes that you could put in there in like different spots and, and uh -huh. give different opportunities to um i mean even just looking at the top 10 of leadville like right. i mean what was it there was only like I mean, the majority of you guys were in the series but there was a few that aren't in that series yeah there were two guys in the top 10 i believe that weren't part of the series yeah. Yeah. So. so that it's kind of interesting to me. And so let's, let's chat Leadville though. Uh, Leadville, probably one of the most famous, most sought after mountain bike races. And still to this day, it shocks me that you've only done it twice as of, now, <laughs> as of this podcast. But, um, why is that? Is that just because you just ha didn't have time? It, did it intertwine with something else? Or like, were you just like, oh, um, I'm not interested. It's just cause I think I was fo so focused on doing cross country stuff for so yeah. long. Um, that I didn't really feel like I could fit a six hour race into the calendar. Typically like mountain bike worlds are also this time of year. So, okay. um, doesn't really make sense to do a six hour race. If you're trying to perform at an hour and a half race in a way, especially yeah, when you're okay. kind of younger. So, um, yeah. you just don't have that depth and volume quite in you yet. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's more just has to do with like, it's always been a race I've wanted to do just kind of a shift in what I'm focusing on, I guess. Um, yeah. I always knew I'd do Leadville a bunch. And it's kind of funny, like now that I have two of the belt buckles, I guess there's, it, it'd be cool to get 10 of them now. <laughs> 10? So it's kind of like yeah, that cause... belt buckle for 10. So I was like, man, I mean, I guess I got hooked on the belt buckles now. <laughs> I didn't never saw myself isn't that, being a belt. Isn't that a guy, thing? But like if you get 10 belt buckles you get another belt buckle and then right. you get like i think it's like 20 belt buckles they always they did the announcements at the thing you'd probably remember better than i would but there's like there's some dude i think there that's working on his 20th like there's like yeah. 10 people that have done like 20 like, <laughs> it's kind of times. crazy and then you have the lead man too people have done the the run and um 10 times of each like people are crazy <laughs> Jeez, yeah well i think we'll probably have like a pike's peak man or something because we got uh we got the run oh yeah there's the run coming. this year that's yeah, right yeah so there's a 50k cool. run so it should be pretty cool i think it's in cheyenne canyon i think, I think. and is it is it the same a uh, same day that we're racing like will they be right I, be well? I, I believe so it happens uh, okay. on sunday yeah so it happens so you on can't Sundays. do can't do both so you probably can't do both but they'll probably try to figure a way around making some huh. you know? kind of so, cool if you could like teammate do like teams too where you pick a running partner and a riding partner and you guys do like a best overall or something <laughs> are you already are you trying to recruit dan crespo yeah well secretly <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get him he's got a big race this weekend i think he's doing the ascent so i don't know if he could fit it into his schedule but <laughs> Because cool the Pikes Peak Ascent, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no. So Leadville, man, you you had a huge goal of winning. Um, it sounds like some things were out of your control. Um, you blow up a wheel in combine. What happened, man? <laughs> you pretty much nailed it right there. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, um, I was having a good day out there, feeling pretty good. Um, went into the bottom of Columbine with the lead group. Um, and man, we were. I mean, like I said in the first podcast i knew keegan was going to want to get the record so yeah um, we were hauling ass from the start like it was pretty much full on um just like yeah. pace lining all day um because he was just driving the pace and it's kind of what you got to do <laughs> yeah. um so yeah went went into the bottom of columbine with i think we were a group of maybe 10 um still. yeah it was a pretty big group right yeah because we were just going so fast it was advantageous to be able to draft and stuff there so yeah. um it just worked out well and just being a deeper field than um previous years i feel like yeah. um so yeah um i had a good a fairly good climb up columbine um keegan obviously danced away but i was close enough to basically i think i went over in sixth i want to say um but with second through fifth we were all pretty close um so i knew yeah. it would come back together on the downhill um and if you've ridden columbine it's pretty rocky up top and then it goes to pretty smooth um yep yep and right before it started to go smooth, I must have um, had a rock fling up and um, hit my wheel wrong um, and cracked it. Um, so had a cracked wheel, um, wouldn't have been able to put a tube in it. So I was like, well, all I can do now is just try to ride this thing down the mountain. Uh, oh, man. Made, it, made it a little ways and then, um, yeah, had a wheel explode. Um, wasn't rideable anymore. So oh, started wow. jogging my way down the mountain and um, it was gonna be a long run. Um, I was kind of like in my head, like, am I even going to finish? Should I just quit? Like, I didn't really know what to do at the point, but I was like, well, just keep running and you can figure this out on your way down the mountain. Um, Jeez. and then my teammate came along, Sophia, and she was having a pretty rough day out there, just having some stomach issues and not able to hold food down or anything. So, yeah. um, in her mind, she was already like toying with the idea of just pulling out. Cause it doesn't really make sense if you feel like that. Um, and then, yeah, she saw me and just gave me a wheel, which was super sweet. It's pretty generous that, of her. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. yeah. You, so for, for, for you people that don't know, like Columbine is like, I mean, if you've done the apex and you're listening to this podcast, I would say Columbine's a lot like going up old stage, but then it like kind of changes the moment. Like you, what do you have like a mile left? You think? Um, yeah, probably about a mile, basically right. There's, at the tree line. All of a sudden, it looks like it's rained only in this one spot. Like there's <laughs> like, you know, ruts and gutters and like from what looks to be water running. I don't know if it's just from snow melt. And then it's super rocky. Like it's, right. it's really rocky. And honestly, like it's almost like it's changed. Like the gravel or the, you know, the dirt has, has just changed in this one little peak and whatever. And so you're saying when you descended, you think you cracked it. Like, when did you realize that you had cracked it? Because 
when you hit the smooth section or no i mean it was pretty instantaneous because once the wheel was cracked the tire wouldn't hold air anymore um ah, okay, so i just okay, okay. i got a flat right away yeah um so that's how i knew something went on and then yeah checked it out and was going to put a tube in but there was no way a tube was going in this rim so yeah, yeah. and that descent like how fast are you guys descending that like in um, time wise because it's a long climb like i mean for like a normal person like me i think i did it in like hour 15 but you uh -huh. guys are like hauling ass up that thing yeah i think it's like 50 minutes for us to go up uh yeah. 53 somewhere around there um and i think we we make it down in about 15 minutes so yeah you're going pretty fast <laughs> yeah no that's that's freaking mental and so you're doing that on a rim it's funny i had an athlete call me and was like yeah i saw a guy who's literally just asking like how does my tire look uh -huh. was that you that when uh, you down? no that probably wasn't me because i had i mean i knew you I were knew just like in full panic <laughs> yeah okay yeah, i knew it was flat i mean it, you can it was it went right away i mean you hear the all the air go psh, and you know you're yeah. screwed um so so you switched a wheel with sophia and sophia was just like instantly cool with it and you still get into what sixth uh no i made uh seventh in lifetime and then ninth overall so um yeah so I, wait so seventh oh okay I get, I get seventh in the saying. lifetime series ninth got in the it. actual race so got it got it got it, got it, got it. Yeah. okay so still top 10 and yeah with, i was and uh, i was stoked and still made it under six and a half so um and i i looked i lost nine minutes on the downhill so yeah. it's um would have been quite a bit faster than last year too so that was really just my goal too is just go quite a bit faster than next year and um so even though i didn't go faster i feel like i had the legs to go faster so <laughs> yeah so did you ride with by your, out there. did you ride by yourself or did you end up catching people and you're just riding with somebody in or how did it work um well i think i was by the time i got to the bottom of columbine i think i was in like 18th or 19th um Okay. So yeah, pretty much just went into full TT mode the rest of the day um, oh. and caught. I was by myself pretty much all the way to the finish, except I wrote, caught Rob Britton for a bit. He was the last guy I passed, and he was still riding strong out there. So yeah, we did a climb together out there. And then, yeah, I mean, other than that, it was um, about three hours by myself just trying to claw back guys. <laughs> But, Jeez, man, yeah. that's insane. It's like it's it's hard to comprehend like what you guys are doing up there. Cause like for guys like me, it's just like we're just trying to get under nine or we're trying to get under twelve, you know, whatever to get just the little piece of our metal and move. Right. <laughs> um, and so we're we're literally riding by ourselves. And every once in a while, we know we end up in a group or whatever, we'll ride with them for a bit, we're checking our time. You're literally full gas trying to catch Keegan, who is all the way up the road so yeah i can't even process yeah. that so what was the early morning wake-up call like for steamboat <laughs> <laughs> oh man um you know i steamboat was it was actually easy to jump out of bed i didn't i normally don't sleep good after races so i was already like tossing and turning and just yeah kind of like i knew it was like i think i woke up at like 3 30 that morning and just couldn't fall back to sleep so like i was already awake when my alarm went off um Jeez. so the morning actually wasn't bad it's more the drive over the night before that's it's kind the of worst. In the butt. yeah it's the worst man you finish you finish leadville yeah see the best part is, is you guys finish it quicker so you have more time. <laughs> yeah exactly but, we have it easier <laughs> yeah you have it easier yeah and and you guys you guys jump in the car and it's what two and a half hours yeah about two and a half hours oh and there's no, like there's no service so music isn't playing and it's yeah it's yeah it's, it's very it's very bleak right and i'm i'm a kind of a poor planner so i wasn't very packed after the race so <laughs> just like Sounds getting all your right. stuff packed thrown in the car yeah um before you know it i don't think we left till it was like probably five o'clock by the time we finally got out of leadville so oh man yeah it's basically you finish do as much as you can to get out of there as quick as possible drive shower eat some food sleep and yeah. wake up and do it all over again on a different bike <laughs> yeah and so you get you get out there and so i mean what was you know what was the steamboat like because it looked to be pretty nuts and it looked like it was a pretty big field like it always is i mean it's it's like kind of like a fast road race almost yeah i mean it totally is i use 32c tires this year so um oh, wow. basically it's just a road setup um and yeah we averaged 22 miles an hour um so in, in a lot of ways it's definitely like a road race um 
this year a break of three went pretty early that had some pretty strong guys um i think a lot of us from lead boat the day before like you're pretty stiff those first two or three hours like you're not motivated to chase anything so yeah um, none of us chased it and before you know it they had an eight minute gap um oh yeah so we we're like well, that's we better get going um chase this, this back. is where the this is where the gravel drama in right itself, yeah right like i guess somebody yeah didn't didn't have bottles and they needed bottles and it's like a neutral stop and so for again people that don't know and understand there's like uh, would you say an unwritten rule book it's yeah, like an there, unwritten rule book like yeah there's, there's a group, whole unwritten rule book for there's gravel. a whole <laughs> unwritten rule book for gravel for road cycling for group rides there's the right. group ride rules like you know don't run the red lights like there's like little things that's like hey you don't do and so there was a rule that's unwritten where it's like, Hey, if we all make the agreement, we're going to stop. We're, we stop. It doesn't matter if you have food, you stop, whatever. Um, but usually I will say this. I think the guy that makes that call is whoever the fastest guys in that group. It's like the yellow Jersey, right? Like if right. the yellow Jersey crashes, you stop, you let the person get up, right. Or the, has to go to the bathroom. We do a pee break for the yellow Jersey. I think it's like the fastest guy makes that call. Right. And so I just wonder who made the call. And if it was an actual call that was made, um, yeah, that's I guess my, that, I'll give a little backstory on it. Um, yeah. Cause you last, were in it, right? Were you, were yeah. you in it? Yeah, I got, yeah, okay. I got, I got roped into the drama. Um, and a lot of us chose to wear packs this year at steamboat. Um, yeah. I'd say half the front group, um, last year, no one in the front group had packs. Um, so I think just by half the pack putting on packs this year, it shows that there's something wrong with the aid stations. Um, uh, and that problem is you get there and there's already 40 amateurs trying to fill their bottles. Yeah. Um, cause they're doing the shorter courses. So it just creates a lot of chaos. If you stop at the aid stations, um, For and I sure. think a lot of us just had the plan. We're not going to stop today. Um, which is why we put, um, one liter bottles on our bikes and we're with pack packs. Um, some of us communicated it with each other, like me and Keegan, um, we plan to do that together. We talk a lot of tactics before races and figure stuff out together, like tires, yeah. tire pressure. So that wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but there were also like the whole Dutch mafia showed up with packs and we didn't. I, lo I love, I anything. love the Dutch mafia. <laughs> Again, yeah. for people don't understand they small country and they all know each other and they all beach racing you know that's a thing mm -hmm. if you don't know anything about it just pause this podcast and look up dutch beach racing it's pretty <laughs> insane um but yeah so you so essentially what i've come to the conclusion of just from that one statement it's like 10 10 different clicks all had conversations and right. essentially you guys rode into these aid stations with the 10 clicks right and not everybody communicated well and right but here's the thing it's a bike race exactly that's so, the only yeah. downside to this, right? <laughs> like there's yeah. money on the line at this point. Like it's right. one thing at like unbound, uh, but even now with lifetime GP, it's like it, back in the day you had to stop for the chase. That was a right. thing where you took a picture in the couch and whatever else. When you had money on the line, I mean, I'm not saying that like you necessarily need to attack the feed zone. I don't think there's, right. it's a, it, there's a, you can do whatever you want. Like it's a, it's a race just, in my mind. <laughs> if you, yeah. If you keep riding through the feed zone, that's not necessarily attacking. The right. Feed zone. That's just, you didn't stop at the feed zone. Right. And in that's my opinion, exactly what we did. Like we were carrying packs all day. It was yeah. 70 miles to go. And like we were ch chasing this breakdown. It had to be brought back if you wanted to win the race. So, um, who was in the break? Do you know? Or is it just uh, look strong? Freddie Ovet. Um, strong. Yeah, super strong. Uh, a closet John, hitter. John Borstelman, I think is his name. Clo another he's closet exactly, hitter. He's, like he's, just, he's, those are the guys that are literally looking to capitalize on this stuff. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that stuff that's happening back here, those are the guys that are going to win off that stuff. Like right. when people are like, oh, yeah, I don't want to chase. And then boom, next thing you know, they get. Yeah, because they're freaking strong. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just knowing what sort of firepower was up there and having an eight minute gap, you're like, you can't, we, we can't stop for 40 minutes while you fill your bottles, Pete. And, um, so yeah, we just kept going and, um, there were, I'd say half the group stopped. We we're still probably a group of 40. I'd say about half the group stopped and half didn't. Yeah. Um, and even of those half that didn't stop, there were still a fair bit that actually came back on. Um, yeah. so 
Yeah. Because you guys weren't just like maliciously attacking. It wasn't like, hey, it was just like, we're not stopping. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like if you got to pee pee off the bike, if you need to fill your water bottle, I'm sorry, you need to stop, probably fill your water bottle. But And and I will say like after a little bit, we sort of did realize how many strong guys were in the group. Um, And we were like, well, let's just roll this now. Um, This is the chase group now. Um, And that's because when you have 60 people, it's also really hard to get the group organized to chase because there's always going to be people sitting on no matter what. Um, And we've been trying to get people to chase for a while and everyone was just content with sitting on. So I was like, well, we got rid of a lot of these guys who are just sitting on. Like, why would we wait for them again? (laughs) Um, For sure. And I mean, but when you're in a group of 60 people, like it's really easy to sit in a group of 60 people. Like you can almost mm -hmm. make it as hard as you want to make it. And I, I put myself in the person's shoes like if I was in that move, if I was uh-huh. in a 60 person move and I have the likes of you and Keegan and it's like, why aren't you coming through? And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, uh-huh. what do you mean? Why am I not coming through? Like, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to make it to the next climb with you, bro. Like, right. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll look at the front with you if you want me to, but yeah, like, I'll no come chance. through every now and then, but yeah. yeah, no, no chance. I'm going to start pulling with you. Like get Peter Stetton to pull, get Peyton McKelvin to pull, get, you know, whoever to pull. Like, that's not my job. Like I'm, yeah. I'm those guys, hopefully the ones that have already gone away, that would have been my best opportunity if I ever <laughs> wanted to quote unquote win, which I would have never been able to do. Right. And so those, I kind of side with those guys a little bit, you know, I can yeah, feel, definitely. feel their pain a bit. But, yeah but, no, um, I, for sure i get that too um but yeah it's just like eventually it's like well that one guy who should be sitting on there's someone who's just marginally stronger than him but he uh, sees so-and-so sitting on and he's like well i'm gonna sit on too if he's sitting on and then you get yeah. this eventually it just gets all the way to the front and no one wants to pull and that's how yeah um so in a way like and then the totally stronger good. guy and then the strongest guys did leadville the day before so they're like yeah. already knocked down a level well i mean i guess you would think keegan would have been knocked down a level but the guy still did what <laughs> keegan does i guess but right. yeah it's it's like you guys are tired you're probably frustrated too a little bit like yeah just fatigue in itself and hunger and and not getting good sleep and whatever yeah. else so a little it's grumpy be... from 2 4 a.m wake ups <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. it had to be had to be pretty wild time but Anyways, no, that sounds that sounds awesome, man. Like sounds like a wild weekend. I'm glad you're recovering from it. I'm glad that you're out doing uh doing some recovery rides and reconning the apex in the process. Um oh yeah. I've seen some photos and I know that there's gonna be some of those trails out there as well. But yeah. uh but yeah, man, I guess if you could give, you know, cause one thing that I we really want to make this apex is like we want to make it open to anyone. We love I love the fact that gravel races is like, hey, there's amateurs out there people doing stuff like if you could give advice to somebody like somebody new coming to the apex like what would your advice be and i'm actually kind of excited for this being that you like you pretty much live on these trails so yeah um um, i'd say pack your full suspension if you have one bring some high volume tires the lower tire pressure you can run in our scree is um definitely advantageous to you um and yeah when riding the scree when in doubt just let it slide a little bit don't be afraid to let that front wheel drift <laughs> yeah yeah oh. no front brake right yeah no front brake <laughs> yeah just pretend you're riding on ice kind of like speed is your friend just keep it steady and you'll be fine um yeah but yeah above all i'd just say like um be prepared for a good experience and um soak in the views um while you're riding out there too there's some awesome places we'll go over the four days um my favorite view stop is um, on the top of Buckhorn, Mount Buckhorn, where you're just kind of yeah. looking in the whole canyon, all the mountains back there. So when you pop out of the trees coming down Jones Park, look over your right shoulder and um, there's some sweet views out there. <laughs> Got to soak That's them in. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like the whole week is like, I mean, if you could just do Jones, like you have to do the whole week to just do Jones Park, it's worth it. Like, right. yeah. I think, I mean, that descent is probably the most fun. I remember doing that ride for the first time be like my god this sucks like just <laughs> climbing climbing and climbing yeah next it's a bit of a know, slog just, but next thing you know you turn right down this you know single track and you're hauling dude and it's a blast yeah, totally so, so but anyways, is, I, this year i don't think jones is in the race which is a bit of a bummer but i think um we do have a pretty sweet shine canyon stage with a couple new trails the city's built yeah. um i believe it's still two trips down captain jack so 
Um, even though Jones Park's out this year, I think there's going to be some awesome trails still. Oh, yeah. You know, like I said, I do think it's funny because people keep telling me that like Colorado Springs probably has some of the best trail riding in the world. And I don't I don't know because I haven't ridden all around the world, but I, I've heard it from guys like you. Yeah. <laughs> and other guys like that who have ridden all around the world. So, guys, if you're coming to Colorado Springs, be ready for some awesome trails. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe to our podcast as well as go check out Russ's profile on Instagram. Be down in the description below. He'll have his bike sponsors and all that good stuff down there as well. If you want to go check that (laughs) stuff out and see what he's going to be rocking for the apex. But other than that, we'll see you next time, guys. Cheers. Yeah. See you in September.